Hi, everybody. Welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm the founder of the Transformation Center, which is based in Westport, Connecticut. And you know, at the center, in addition to the individual sessions that I do with my transformation coaching and shamanic energy healing, we also offer a variety of classes and workshops. Um, we even have a shamanic clinic on Zoom, which is at the second Tuesday of every month, which is great. Or is the first Tuesday? Anyway, everything is on our website, the transformationcentercct.com. So we're gonna put up the contact info so you can reach out, you know, text us, call us, email. And we really love to hear from people who are just beginning on this path. So please reach out. You know, and everything we do at the center is really focused on helping you gain a better self-awareness. That's really what it's about. So from there, you can create the life you love. You can let go of limiting beliefs. You can transform them. You can really tune in to your inner self, who you truly are. Yeah. So thanks for being here tonight on Conscious Conversations. I'm really excited that my guest is Dale Turnbull. Hello, pleasure Hi. to be here. Yeah. Welcome to the show. You can tell he's not from our British area. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. Yes, but I know Dale actually through his wife. Yes. We met many years ago. We met very well, and I've also done some shamanistic practice at your center as well. So, yeah, That's it's right. exciting to be here. Yeah, so welcome back to Westport. Thank it's you. It's been a while. It has. So I'm just going to read a little bit about you before we get started so our audience can get up to speed. Okay? Sounds good. All right, so Dale Turnbull is a Metaphors of Movement trainer with more than 10 years of experience in coaching and training, both individually and in the corporate setting. And we're going to put up your slide with your contact info, too, so people can reach out Beautiful. whenever they're ready to do that. So in his approach, in addition to the metaphors of movement, Dale also uses neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, okay. which I also have the training in, which is really, really, really effective. He also uses hypnosis, provocative change works, and integral eye movement therapy. Yeah. We're going to learn all about these modalities, so don't worry. Um, a lot of them are new to me as well. So Dale mainly works with emotional problems such as angers, fears, anxieties, and phobias. 100% correct. Oh my gosh. All right. So we're just going to dive right in, but you know, I'm curious because I don't really remember how you got started in all this. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started. Yeah, so my background, um, to go a little back in time, I actually did languages at university, strangely enough. I did German and Spanish, and after my degree, I was looking for, oh, what do I do? Because most people don't normally know what they want to do for their life. So uh, yeah. I actually found a job um, in recruitment, and I moved into that side of things, did training and development on the corporate side of things. But I started to get frustrated because I was there for like six years and about four years in, I'm like, well, how can I impact and influence people in a way that's positive for their development? Because mm -hmm. a lot of the time we want to be successful at work, we want to do well, we have all the right intentions, but we have emotional challenges and blockers and things that stop us from progressing. Right, that we may not even be aware of. A hundred percent. And for me, it's like, how can I communicate with you so that you can have the realizations to move past these hurdles to overcome them or to find a different way around them, so to speak? Mm -hmm. So um, I studied NLP. I went and learned from John Grinder, one of the co-creators, did that, and, and that sort of really started my journey. From there, I branched out into my own private practice. And yeah, ever since then, I've been adding other skills and modalities to my skill set, really about interventional change. Really, okay, mm. do you have a problem that's emotional? You really want to deal with it and get it sorted? I, I like to fix problems, and that, that's I've always had that passion for that kind uh -huh. of thing. Uh -huh. So yeah, that, that's a little bit about my background, and more recently, um, I've moved into the more metaphorical kind of way of working with people, because loving to work with people, I'm great working with people, but I, I've always really struggled working with myself. Um, because it can be uncomfortable looking at yourself and being actually, I've got problems, I've got issues, I've got challenges. Yeah. And um, the metaphorical way is a very non-confrontational way to look at, okay, what's 
going on what's my experience of what's happening mm -hmm. and then being able to create shifts so for me it's actually really started to allow me to look inward as opposed to just working with people I've now been working a lot more on myself so yeah that's a little bit of stuff that, in a nutshell. That's cool so yeah working metaphorically doesn't it it helps um, like access your unconscious mind in a, in a more easy way or what? Yeah there are a few different ways to look at metaphor so um, we've all heard about storytelling and um, if you're interested in the show you've probably read like spiritual stories and there's always a deeper meaning behind it mm -hmm. so that's one kind of metaphor metaphors of movement works on what is known as an autogenic metaphor so you've probably heard the phrases like I'm stuck in a rut I feel like mm -hmm. I'm hitting my head against a brick wall mm -hmm. I'm I'm just being held back it's like a burden a weight on my shoulders right? we all hear about these sort of experiences and what the metaphors work that I do focuses on is exploring that landscape. If you're carrying a weight, well, what's that weight like? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you can't move forward, well, what's stopping you? What's that like? Is it a wall? Are you being held back by something? Mm -hmm. Because it allows us to explore our own experience. And opposed to telling a story which can create some change, mm -hmm. I'm finding out what the inner person's metaphorical world is like for them. Oh, wow. It's really interesting. The way to think about it is it's like we've got the logical side of things and the emotional side of things. And normally, um, we've also got the two hemispheres of the brain. And what happens is sometimes there's a bit of a disconnect. Mm -hmm. So using this, it serves to communicate between those themes. And there's a lot of applications, not just in the work I do, but it can also be used and tagged onto a lot of different therapies, such as shamanism, things like that, mm -hmm. because it, it gives you a whole new tool of communicating. All right, that sounds amazing. So how, when you're working with somebody, um, like, like walk us through, like what would the process look like? Okay, cool. So let's just imagine you've got a problem and you say you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. what's that like? And it's like, well, it feels like oh, I'm just stuck in a, I'm stuck in despair. Okay, and I'm like, what's that mm -hmm, like? It's mm -hmm. like, well, I feel like, yeah, I'm just stuck. I just can't move forward. Mm -hmm. What happens when you try? I just feel like I hit my head against a wall. I'm like, okay, so what's right? And they're like, well, it's a wall. What's left is a wall. What's behind me is a wall. What's in front is a wall. And what's up? Well, I mean, there's like light. So you're in a pit. Ah. It's like, oh, yeah, so I would draw that out. Okay. And then we talk through that. Because a lot of people think, okay, if someone's in a pit and they're trying to move forward, they're motivated. They want to move forward. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is they're just hitting a wall. But there's ways that we can work with that to get that person out of that hole or help them get out of that hole in a different way. Mm. What I, I also find useful is a lot of different therapies and a lot of different practices have got certain filters on how you look at information. And for me, it's really about how do you have a tailored approach to working with people? So if I understand how you're creating the problem or the inner structure of it, we can then work with that at a deeper level. And metaphors work with both sides of the brain, so it creates a lot of harmonized, conscious, centralized change. So it's really quite fun. And it's fun. I like fun. I'm very. I don't think change work needs to be heavy, you know. <laughs> right, right. No, I agree. I mean, <clears throat> it can be emotional. Things come up. Yeah. But in this case, it's more about not um, like talking about the issue so much. Yeah. You don't have like. How does that work? Like. How well, for example. I just want to know what it's like, the metaphorical story okay, behind so what it. What it feels like or looks like or... It's actually slightly different. So if you say what it feels like, well it feels like it's a, it's a pain. Well what's that like? Well it's like I'm being stabbed in the chest. Okay, so you're looking for that metaphor, specific I'm, uh, metaphor. I'm looking for that metaphor to then okay. explore it. Okay. Um, because it gives me a good understanding of the whole picture of how things work. But for example, uh, I'll give you an example regarding shamanism, if anybody has experienced that. Definitely recommend Case Center, amazing <laughs> place. Um, but I was working with a gentleman and he found himself in, a, in like a quagmire or like I sort of, he said he was like he was like in this pit and he couldn't okay. get out. Okay. Now because I have this understanding of how metaphors work, I can then communicate with him in a way to say, okay, well you're in a pretty dirty situation. To get out of that, it might be a lot of effort. 
you might feel like to get out of it, you've really got to trudge and each step is heavy. But there is a way out. But when you get out of that, you're going to be pretty dirty and people will see that. <laughs> and obviously that creates certain thoughts and feelings and realizations. So it can be coupled with NLP, hypnosis, and lots of different things as a method mm -hmm. to create space. But I think the other thing is it's not normally expected. You come right. to a therapist, coach, change worker, different things. People have a certain expectation of how it works. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. expect you to draw a little picture and talk about it and create that sort of shift. Yeah. So it's a really good different way to try something if you've got clients that are really stuck with their problems. Yeah, sometimes the element of chain or the element of surprise or something different it, it, it gives you that little oh, that you need yeah because also yeah. a lot of people are used to telling their story right they stuck in their story yes <laughs> stuck in their story literally and it, and it repeats and repeats so mm -hmm. I want to move away from that yeah to find out what's going on in their unconscious side of things and create that bridge mm -hmm. between what's going on under the skin and what's going on logically, so that the logic can understand what's happening emotionally. Right, so they can appreciate both, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And then you can make decisions and you can harmonize. Uh, another interesting example is that uh, like people say, normally burdens mm. represent there's something that's carried. People who feel like they've got a lot of responsibility. We talk about the weight of responsibility, like mm. Atlas, you know, holding mm -hmm. the big, big globe. These things are also archetypal, which links into like, can be, if you're interested, tarot symbolism and spirituality around that side of things. Mm -hmm. So it encompasses so much and it's really quite intense. And I, I mean, I'm still studying it. It's an ongoing thing. I didn't create this, by the way. Um, it, was yeah. it was created by Andrew T. Austin. Yeah, he's a British guy. Originally, he worked within um, healthcare as a nurse, but he did NLP. He's also created integral eye movement therapy which is similar to EMDR, but different in quite a few ways. And it works really effectively with trauma and um, emotional challenges. Okay, so uh, how are they different? Because I know most people might be familiar with EMDR, yeah. not with, what do you call it? IEMT. IEMT, -E Integral Eye Movement, Movement Therapy. Therapy. So one of the big differences is EMDR focuses on desensitizing the memory like if you've got a problematic memory, mm -hmm. but the emotional challenge is normally still there. Okay. The way IEMT works is it works to neutralize the emotions of the memory. I mean, you can still remember it, but by remembering it, you don't feel. Okay, you're not triggered. You're not that, triggered, like you, you don't have the emotional challenge. So it's really good to essentially bring resources to that negative emotional state. Um, and it's also similarly can be content free. So if people don't want to talk about their challenges or problems or talk about the things, it can be really useful if there are some certain emotional traumas. Right. So they don't have to relive the trauma in order to change their emotional reaction. Exactly. Yeah. So we work on, you can work on the uh, images that are coming on, the memories. We can work on the kinesthetics or the feelings. Um, but we can also work on sometimes aspects of identity that are challenging for people as well. Mm -hmm. So, so with someone with severe trauma, is that where you, you would usually start with that modality? Um, so, I mean, it would depend what comes on their pre-questionnaire or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that could be an option if they had very extreme amounts of that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time, people who have had repeated problems or challenges, they might have seen multiple coaches or therapists. And the first thing is they normally don't believe things can change. <laughs> because yeah. they, everything has failed. Mm -hmm. So ideally you want to create belief first that there can be some change. So you can do a few different things to, um, it's like um, the NLP example that I use is okay, you ever feel anxious, right? They, they, yeah. How do you feel anxious? Normally people look down, stereotypically. So I say, okay, well just put your head up, tilt your head up, look up and try and feel anxious. Hmm. And it's, uh, some people can apparently, but it's a lot harder because your physiology also reflects your emotional state of being. Wow. So just those little things can allow people to see, ah, oh, there is something different. Things can shift mm -hmm. and they can shift relatively easily. Yeah, well, I think that's, that's the, the key um, in my experience is to have people, if they're not gonna change the belief you know, right away, yeah. 
than to give them like little incremental shifts. Exactly. And so they can get them on the road. Right? Exactly. Get them on the road. The straight that and metaphor. narrow. <laughs> exactly. And this is the thing. We, <laughs> we use this in communication all the time. We do, don't we? It's really interesting. It is, isn't it? And, I mean, I mean, I could talk on ages about this subject, but you've got like uh, life as a journey, which is very Western, taking steps, moving forward. And like more Eastern is like life is about expansion, expanding yourself mm. and your mentality. So a lot mm. of different crossovers and yeah. pros and cons. No, neither of them are right or wrong, but they both have advantages and disadvantages. It's, it's, it's nice to have access to both. Exactly. Which... You know, it sounds like what you're you're up to. Yeah, and for for me, I, I always come from no way we react or be or do is negative. Mm. It's just, do we want the choice to react differently? Good point. And that's that's what I intend for people because sometimes, like I was working with a, a young gentleman this morning, and he's got a fear of dogs. I mean, he's like eleven. Dogs are scary at the age of 11. Mm. So, okay, so he wants to protect himself. So how can we work with that? When is it good to be mindful? If I was to remove that fear of dogs altogether, that it's might be... Problematic. Problematic, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's it's all about how, how can we think about things differently and really impact people in an mm -hmm. interesting way. And I'm just so passionate about this work because it's really... It's helped me to improve my health, my wealth, my, 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 just my well-being, because I can also do it on myself. Right, so you apply all of these tools to Yeah, yourself. and I think for, for me, that's some of the challenge with some of modalities, is you can't always apply it to yourself. Like, I mean, I do shamanism, I do drumming, and it can help, and I can get into that zone, mm -hmm. but sometimes some tools struggle with self-application, I feel. And this is where why I'm so passionate about doing it, teaching it, and yeah, helping people with it. Yeah, so people once once you teach it to them, they literally can do this at home. You can do this at home. <laughs> you can do this at home. Yeah, you can do it at home. You can do it with clients. Um, and yeah, and and it just yeah, it's a whole new area of communication that is normally missed from my right. experience. So you also train trainers or train coaches? Yeah, so, so I, I train coaches, or well, you don't have to be a coach or therapist, but if mm -hmm. you're interested in learning, I mean, get in touch. Um, yeah, I teach people how to use the metaphors of movement tools and techniques for themselves, but also to apply them to others. And I also host practice groups because for me, practice mm. makes perfect. And it's about making sure that you gain the confidence, build the skill. Um, but also you've got a platform yeah community no that's a great idea so once you you teach them then you have an ongoing yeah community. I have, yeah I have an ongoing community of people who do practice and I post contents and realizations because it's such a broad spectrum I mean I'm still mm -hmm. learning stuff so when I come up with things I'm like what do you guys think because mm -hmm. I, I don't want to just it's not just about my perspective. I'm open for different angles yeah. and different ways of looking at things. Right, because there's not just one way to anything. I, I, exactly, and yeah. as soon as you think there is one way, you just narrow. massively narrow your attention. Right, right. plus, you know, in my experience, every um, individual that we work with is different. Exactly. So you're not, it's not one size fits all. This is true, and it's like, I mean, I've worked with, so, I mean, we've talked about a road, we've talked about a wall, those sound pretty standard. But when you understand what's in someone's environment, it can be crazy. Like you can get mm -hmm. some people who say, I don't know, um, I don't know, there's like a, a, a ravine or a cliff to the left. So mm -hmm. they might feel on edge, oh. some might say. Some people might feel like, I don't know, they're, I don't know, yeah, like a stab in the back. Oh. Mm. Okay. Also, how do you relate to people? Do, who do you put first? Mm. Who do you put second? Who's in the background? Stuff like that. Because if there was no one in the background, they couldn't stab you in the back. It's just really interesting, right? Yeah. Well, yes. Exactly. I mean, I love this, Dale. And it's like, you know, what I'd said at the beginning, to me, it's like the first step is, is awareness. Yeah. 100%. Or self-awareness. You know, like what, like, I don't think people really are conscious of their thoughts so much. A hundred percent. And to be honest, I, I struggle a lot with this. My wife, she's very... She's very good at knowing what she's, her thoughts are. She's very good at knowing what her feelings are. She asked me how I'm feeling. I'm like, I've got no idea. <laughs> but I can use this process to start to understand what's going on inside me. Yes, yes, Because Because yes. there's not one practice that fits all. 
Right. And it's okay. Well, what's the practice? If I if I struggle with these things, okay, how can I become more self-aware in a way that is not necessarily being conscious of my thoughts all the time or my feelings or my, like how can I work with it in different ways? Well, yeah, and just to have it be a natural process, so you're not you're not like always like thinking about your thinking or second guessing or you know it just becomes like part of who you are and and how you operate a hundred percent yeah i mean i think that's the goal is like is like um shifting our operating system so where it's just natural yeah i think it's interesting because the more experiences you have obviously the more you can learn like if you have patterns you know when to stop them when you mm -hmm. can interrupt them Mm -hmm. um, but also, yeah, you can explore. I, th I think one of the things that's interesting for me is to understand, like NLP, like talks a lot about meta programs, which are dichotomies within personality. So you've got, I know, you've got Myers Briggs, well, like introvert, mm -hmm. extrovert, stuff like that. But by understanding what your, so like some people are more cognitive, more thinking. Some people are more feeling. Mm -hmm. But by knowing where you are, normally. Mm -hmm. You can either train yourself in the other direction. So, for example, if you're very logical, you might want to take up an art class or dancing that's more emotionally, creatively expressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can stretch yourself and become more whole um, and expansive. So then you have more choice. You don't have to be logical. You can be like, okay, well, let's take a step back. Let's be creative about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Or if you're creative and have no structure, Doing something that involves structure could also help you evolve. So it's about, okay, how can we tool ourselves up mm -hmm. to expand ourselves, appreciating our strengths and our challenges, yes. but then we can know how we can work with those. Yeah, no, I think that's that's really that's really good because we all have all of that within us. 100%. And I love what you say about choice. Um, for me, that's really key because choice brings freedom. Yeah. And that's what I, I like to tell people I work with is like, you know, just just like um, imagine that freedom where you can you can choose and you have that ability, you have that um, that freedom to choose and how that can change your life. A hundred percent. But to play devil's advocate, yeah. too much choice is a problem. Oh. Too much freedom is a problem because then you don't make decisions. Okay. You got some, in my perspective yeah, at least, yeah. because f f if you if you can only do one thing, you lack choice. But if you have a hundred things you could do, some people are so overwhelmed by choice yeah. and that freedom, they never make a distinction. Well, I've seen that. I have seen that. <laughs> You're right. That's absolutely true. And, and I have yeah. that problem. Yeah. Sometimes I struggle to make a choice because I like the options. Well, right. Why? Why do this when I could do all of these things? <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> it reminds me of when. Um, I guess I was younger, and um, I was known for always like jumping in and you know helping and saying yes. And and people would say to me, "Can't you can't you say no? Can, can you never say no?" I said, "Well, you know what? I could, but I don't want to." Yeah, it's <laughs> just so good to do stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, I have to pick and choose. And now you know I've I've gotten wisdom in my in my later years that I see that I can't do everything. But it's so funny. This is totally off topic, but I just thought of this. I got the message uh, recently, about a week ago, that I'm going to be writing a book, and it's called Say Yes. Nice. So there you go. Beautiful. Say Yes. And I'm going to have stories in there. I'm going to invite anybody who wants to contribute to send me their story about when saying yes, you know, help them or help somebody else. Because the, the subtitle is going to be something like, how getting out of my head and into my heart transformed my life. Nice. So would you like to contribute your story? I'm more than happy to contribute. Awesome. Yay, yeah. I'm glad I thought of that. And anybody out there, if you want to contribute your story, send it in. This no. is going to be in the next you know, year I'm going to be working Exciting. on. Exciting book. What made you decide? I'm curious. I didn't decide. It just came to me in a meditation. Oh, and you just like. It was like a download. You're going to write a book. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, I didn't mean to get off topic. No, 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 it's we, cool. it's let's see, we have about, I don't know, five or six minutes left, but I want to hear a little bit more about NLP. Okay. Because for our audience who they've heard of neuro linguistic programming, they're just not gotcha. that familiar with it, perhaps. 
Cool. So, um, yeah, I'll talk a bit about NLP and then I'll come to the last point, which yeah, is provocative change works. Yes, but I also want to hear about your intros to your metaphors of movement. Got okay. you. Okay, okay, cool. So, um, NLP, I mean, I'm a practitioner, master practitioner and trainer. Um, okay. I've done classic and new code NLP. New code is with John Grinder's school of NLP. And yeah, it's really about, okay, how do we structure our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions? What sort of, we, we all have voices in our head. Nobody talks about it. Um, we also have like, some people have pictures in their head and we all get feelings and sensations in our body. And NLP focuses on, okay, what's the, it's about modeling, but modeling the process of how do we do what we do? How do we feel anxious? To feel anxious, you can't just feel anxious. You have to think something beforehand, picture something beforehand, see something externally, mm -hmm. hear something externally. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a mm -hmm. stimulus. And from that, you essentially go through a process. Okay. So NLP is about, okay, understanding that process and interrupting it so that we can either go from, oh, there's a dog to, oh, I feel calm and relaxed rather than, oh my God, I, I can't even do anything. Da, da, da. So it's like, okay, how can we change those in a more logical and systemic, systematic way? Okay. So that's what NLP is about. I use it a lot in my practice. And it, for me, it gives a good fundamental baseline for a lot of practices. Mm -hmm. So I, I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Provocative change works is a bit interesting. It actually comes from something called provocative therapy by a mm -hmm. guy named Fra Frank Farrelly. Okay. And um, essentially, it's about using provocation to stimulate thought. Hmm. So most people think about provocation as being rude, saying bad things, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But the, the situation is we're talking like an old friend and we're having a conversation. But let's just say, oh, someone's like, oh, I'm just so overwhelmed. It's like, well, nothing wrong with being overwhelmed. You're a busy person, lots of thoughts to have, lots of things to go on. It's like, no, but it's a problem. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's totally fine. I mean, you're thinking, you're creative. <laughs> Have you ever thought like Mozart? He thought a lot, you know? <laughs> it's about bringing the person outside of their normal thought patterns and processes oh. in, a, in a playful way. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so I incorporate that and it's more of a style of presenting huh. because, yeah, well, why does this stuff need to be heavy when right. we can just lighten up, you know? Yeah, and then they can see it differently exactly see it more clearly no longer in the dark cool. um, and yeah so I do have an introduction to metaphors of movement coming up okay um, I've actually got a training course coming up as well um, you've got my contact details I think on the slide so yeah, anyone who's interested we'll, we'll put that up again we'll put the contact info up again so that would be the best way to email you or text you. 100% so okay. yeah feel free to reach out to me um, I can tell you more about it um, uh, depending on my availability, I could give you a taster as well as, a, as an option. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be running this course, introduction, and then the main course. So if you're a coach, therapist, or change worker, or you're curious to work on yourself, you want to learn something a bit different? Yeah, I think that's always a good place to start. I mean, that's kind of how I got into all of this. It's like I wanted it for myself, you know, the 100%. coaching, the healing, and then I realized how helpful it is for people, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to be doing it. I'm really passionate. So it's a free introductory... Yeah, the introduction is, is free. It? It'll be an hour. Okay, that's what I was going to cool, say. Cool, yeah. Hour. It'll be an hour on Zoom. Okay. And, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about it, a bit about the history. You'll get to elicit a bit of one of your own metaphors, your experience, maybe somewhere you're stuck. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we'll work through that for that hour and give you a bit of a taster of how that can sort of work and operate. Okay, great. Well, thank you for that. Pleasure. It's great having you. Is there anything we have about another minute? Is there any thought that you have that you didn't cover? I just want to say it's been really, truly amazing to be here, mm -hmm. to reconnect. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, you're, you're doing really great work. Oh, and you. I think it's beautiful that you create a platform for people who have things to offer uh, to people who are looking to expand themselves, grow, and really develop, you know? Yeah. Well, that's why I started the show. To, to get the word out there. You know, there's so many resources. If you're not sure where to start, you can just watch a bunch of the shows and find somebody who speaks to you because it's really important to have that good fit, you know, with a practitioner 100%. and an individual. Um, and we all offer some type of free intro call yeah. or like you're doing the show exactly. or whatever, and you can find out. 
So Beautiful. Thank you for being here today. Thank you Dale. so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. And thank you to our audience for being here. I hope you enjoyed the show. And thank you to Verso Studios for hosting us, the Westport Library. It's awesome. All right. Take care next time. Namaste.